Hello and welcome to Nan's Moral Moments. Now before I start with the main topic today, I want to quickly draw your attention to my latest partnership project, Beyond the Box. Beyond the Box is a brand new model-related podcast hosted by myself and Moss from Moss6510 Models. You can check out his channel below if you've not had a chance to do so already. Episode 1 came out on the 2nd of April, so this isn't an April Fool's joke, it's a new weekly modelling podcast that you can check out on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, BuzzFeed, and other podcasting apps. We'd love for you to join us and listen in, especially if you've a commute or want to have some company whilst modelling. This is the Revel 132nd scale F4U1 Corsair, which I purchased from Hobbycraft in their Christmas sale. Now I recently did a video on Ravel's 2023 releases, which you can check out above, and a number of comments talked about how I wasn't being fair to Ravel, so I thought this would be a good demonstration of why I feel Ravel deserve everything I said in that video. So we have a nice glossy box, which is unfortunately end opening. This is a habit that Ravel cling on to, probably for cost reasons, but it is quite inconvenient. The instructions are a typical Ravel loose booklet format, Opening these up, the decals are loosely contained within them, starting with a picture of the model and a history of the aircraft. We can see a parts inventory and sprue layout diagram at the start after the multilingual safety notices. We then get straight into the pictorial instructions, which follow a predictable standard layout. Here you can see we have the option to have the gull wings of the Corsair folded, and we'll come back to that one later. At the end of the booklet we finish with two painting schemes and decal layouts also printed in black and white and referencing Ravel colours mentioned at the beginning of the instruction sheet. Moving on to the decal sheet, it appears well printed, in good register and covers all the standard markings you'd expect on an aircraft this size. There's a fair amount of carrier film on the numbering and the instrument panel is rather dark, but there aren't really any red flags here so far. Now we open up the large single plastic bag containing all the sprues together, though at least the transparency sprue is separately bagged within this. Examining the first sprue, you can see the kit is moulded in very shiny light grey plastic and is covered in fine raised detail. Moulding on the main parts appears crisp enough. But looking to smaller pieces, you can see a fair amount of flash, and examining the interior, we can see that it's effectively devoid of any detail. The second sprue holds the engine parts, cowling, prop, and upper outer wings, and again here you can start to see some rather clumsy detail, flash, and more raised markings. The interior of the wings shows some strange moulding, presumably to give the upper surface the texture sort. The next fuselage sprue with the wheels and pilot shows more flash, and the impression overall is a lack of finesse. Moving on to the last main sprue, the wings again show fairly basic details, but the real giveaway is when we come to the cockpit, which is extremely basic. Zooming into this area, we can see nothing more than the most obvious items are shown, with little attempt to represent wiring, controls, or other details. Many of these parts suffer from large amounts of flash, and the cockpit seat itself is thick and moulded into the cockpit wall. As a comparison, these are a couple of photos of an actual corset cockpit. The pilot included gives further clues here. Two pieces split front to back and looking rather like a wooden dummy. The wheels initially don't appear that bad, but once again, very simplified. Actual Corsair wheels had much deeper insets, tread, and other details on the inner hubs. Landing gear doors also show this, with no inner detail at all. The engine does attempt to have some detail, but it's very simplified and basic, and the cleanup needed will also detract from that. As you can see here on these pictures, the actual double wasp had a lot of starter plug cables and other details, and the worst offender on the Ravel kit is probably the most visible, the central gear housing to the prop, which just looks completely wrong. The box art is correct, but the kit is not. Now although you can opt for having the wings folded, as I mentioned before, the wing fold mechanism inserts are basic in the extreme, being little more than blocking pieces. The actual wing fold is much more complex, having actuator rods for the flaps and many more items here. Even the prominent wing intakes are quite clumsily handled, being quite far from how the real ones look. 
The transparency is a bit thick, but at least clear, though not optically so as you can see obvious distortion when looking through it. It's probably one of the better areas on the kit. So it should come as no surprise that this tooling of the Corsair first appeared in 1970, making it over 50 years old. The problem is that this is being sold in Hobbycraft brand stores, that's a craft store chain in the UK, not the model manufacturer. It retails for £32.50 and is available from many other places for similar prices, but the reason I mention Hobbycraft is that it is a craft store that sells models, not a model shop that can give advice, and so people could quite easily buy this to get back into modelling after having a hiatus of a decade or two, expecting to see how things have moved on, and get something that is exactly the same, or worse, as when they left. There's nothing obvious on the box itself to show that it's an older kit. The box is glossy and the art is good, though even that is only a refresh of the 1970 artwork itself, the decals were added in the past decade, so it all seems a bit dishonest. It seems like a deliberate ploy to sell something that has already had its day to the unwary. I mean, for £15 more you can get the Trumpeter 132nd kit, which isn't perfect, but it has a better cockpit, a vastly superior engine, and wingfold detail. Or for just over half the cost of the Revell kit, you can get the 148 scale Tamiya kit, which will be a much more enjoyable build and accurate result. Now some viewers have commented that old kits can be a challenge, or don't call yourself a modeler if you can't make a good model out of a bad kit, or that I should compare this kit with other 1970 contemporary mouldings. Well, I'm afraid all of you have completely missed the point. It's not about what you can do as an individual modeler. It's about expectations and honesty. I'm also not buying this in 1970. I'm buying it with money today, and I will judge it based on what my pounds or dollars can buy today. Now, I am going to do this kit, but I do so with my eyes open, knowing it was an old mould and I chose to buy it, and even then I only did so because it was 50% off. But I can choose to put the effort and or money into upgrading it, or not. It's whatever experience I choose. But I'm making that choice knowingly. If, however, I were a newer modeler to whom £32.50 was a significant, or perhaps all, of my modelling budget, and I'd bought this expecting something equating to what else I could get for that money in terms of quality, fit, detail and so on, then it's not going to be a pleasant experience. I can tell you this with absolute certainty, because I did experience this with Ravel earlier in my modelling journey, and it took me a lot to go back and try them again when they started doing decent models in the 1990s. Now judging this by the universal criteria I use, just on an unboxing level alone, this barely scrapes over the 50% mark and I wouldn't recommend anyone to buy this unless they absolutely knew what they were getting into. Even then, I think I'd advise them to wait until they could afford to buy the Trumpeter kit, or save some money and buy a 48 scale Tamiya for a generally better and more enjoyable experience for just over half of the price. That's all for this instalment of Man's Model Moments. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button, subscribe to the channel for more like it, and share this video with others you think would also enjoy it. You can also follow me on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook, and if you're feeling generous then I also have a Patreon, which is absolutely the best way of helping me to grow the channel and produce more content like this. With that, I hope you have plenty of modelling moments of your own, and I look forward to welcoming you on the next video.